Welcome to Spooky History. In today's episode, we're leading a merry dance with the Pied Piper of Hamelin. Wait, that's real? We all know the fairy tale. The story popularised by Goethe's 1803 poem, and the Brothers Grimm, their 1816 tale, and Browning's 1842 poem takes place in 1284. The town of Hamelin was suffering from a rat infestation that no one could solve or even control. That is until a piper dressed in multicoloured clothes appeared, claiming that he could. The desperate, or perhaps disbelieving, mayor promised to pay him a huge sum for the removal of the rats. The piper accepted, pulled out a pipe and played. The rats, hypnotised by the music, followed him out of the city to drown in the Wesser River. The piper returned to claim his fee, but the mayor reneged on his promise, reportedly offering 50 guilders instead of the promised 1,000. Enraged, the piper stormed out of the town, vowing to return later to take revenge. And on St John and Paul's day, while the adults were in church, the piper returned, dressed in green like a hunter. He played his pipe, and all the children of the town, all 130 of them, stopped whatever they were doing, and followed him out of the town. The Hamlin Street, named Bungalow Senstras, Street Without Drums, is believed to be the last place that the children were seen, and to this day music or dancing is not allowed on that street. However, it is sometimes said three children avoided the fate that befell the rest. Three out of just over 130, at best. One did so because he went back home to get his coat, another because he was deaf, and the third because he was blind. They were left to tell the parents of the town what had happened, or at least what they knew of it, which didn't include the other children's ultimate fate. And so their fate is ultimately unknown, or at least contradicted in different versions of the tale. Some say the children went into a cave, never to be seen again. Others say the piper made them walk into the Wesser as he did with the rats, and they all drown. Or that he took them to a beautiful land beyond the top of Copen Hill, which might just be fairy tale speak for the same thing. Still, others say the piper returned the children after payment, possibly far greater than the original thousand guilders promised. Depending on who you ask, the tale of the Pied Piper of Hamelin is either a story about not trusting strangers or properly paying freelancers. And the only fairy tale gift wrapped with rodents that even Disney can't figure out how to give a song to. And this is spooky history, not freaky folklore. So, of course, this isn't just a story, but also a crime scene. An unsolved one at that. Although freaky folklore could be a good idea for a new show. Hmm. Official Hamlin Town records start with the little that we actually categorically know about this event, an entry from 1384, the first in the Town Chronicles, which reportedly states, It is 100 years since our children left. To this chillingly cryptic line, we can add a stained glass window from only a few short decades later, circa 1300. The window is generally considered to have been created in memory of a local historical tragedy in Hamelin and was placed in the town's Nikolai Church. Though it was destroyed in 1660, the window was described in several surviving accounts between the 14th and 17th centuries, and a modern reconstruction of the window based on these features, the colourful figure of the Pied Piper and several figures of children dressed in white. Several documents from the following century also record this apparently historical event. All refer to a similar story of 130 children or young people vanishing on the 26th of June 1284, following a Pied Piper to a place called Calvary or Coppen. A version of them is said to be recorded on a house known as Rattenfanger House or Ratcatcher's House in Hamelin. In the year 1284, on the day of Saints John and Paul, on 26th of June, 130 children born in Hamelin were led out of town by a piper clothed in many colours, to Calvary near the Coppen, and lost. That the children of Hamelin vanished in one big traumatising event therefore seems very likely. At the very least, it has a historical record to back it up. 
though the one line opening the town's official history doesn't mention the figure of the Piper. His appearance in the story and his link to the town's tragedy can definitely be traced back to within a few decades of the oldest retelling of the story. But what happened to the children? The seemingly obvious one is that the Piper is just a representation of death brought to the town by the rats, themselves often associated with plague. But that is actually the least likely scenario as the rats were a much later addition to the story, seemingly first appearing over 250 years years after the event in Count Froben Christoph von Zimmern's version in his Zimmerisch Chronik, written between 1559 and 1565. Also there wasn't an outbreak of plague in the region at the time. Many other theories have been suggested, but most of them just take it as read that it was an explainable sudden tragedy and then just pick one seemingly at random. These include starvation, a murderous dancing mania, a mass accidental drowning, burial by landslide, etc, etc. Apart from anything else, these ignore the basic language of what we do know. Why would this starvation, drowning or landslide have only affected the children of the town? Why in such a high number, at a single event, that it was worth remembering a century later, and why describe these children as having simply left? The theory of the dancing mania is the only one of these with a little more to back it up than just wild guesswork, though not by much. Known as St Vitus's dance, such outbreaks of mass psychogenic illnesses did occur during the 13th century. Some of the children, one chronicle suggests, expired shortly thereafter, having flat out danced themselves to death, and those who survived were left with chronic tremors. Maybe Hamlin also saw such an event. Some slightly more plausible explanations include some kind of call to arms. The date of the children's disappearance, the 26th of June, is also the date of pagan midsummer celebrations, and at the time there were regions in Germany where midsummer was celebrated by lighting fires on the hills. Maybe the piper was some sort of shaman or a recruiter for the army, or some kind of relocation project. This is the theory proposed by the official website for the town of Hamlin, which says, among the various interpretations reference to the colonization of East Europe starting with Low Germany is the most plausible one. The children of Hamlin would have been in those days citizens willing to emigrate, being recruited by landowners to settle in Moravia, East Prussia, Pomerania, or in the Teutonic land. It is assumed that in past times all people of the town were referred to as children of the town or town children, as is frequently done today. There are two factors to support this theory. First, the century the children disappeared in is known as a vast colonization project of the East by Germans from Lower Saxony and Westphalia following the defeat of the Danes at the Battle of Bornhoved in 1227. The bishops and dukes of Pomerania, Brandenburg, Uckermark and Prignitz sent recruitment officers around all of the towns offering rich rewards to the young and able-bodied who were willing to move to the new lands. Those recruiters were known as locators, were often brightly dressed and silver-tongued, and often played instruments to attract attention. The drive was obviously far-reaching and successful, as can be seen with our second piece of evidence, the names. Family names known to exist in Hamlin in 1284 also pop up, with surprising frequency in the regions north of Berlin and in Poland, with others seemingly deriving from the village's name itself, such as Hamel, Hamler, and Hamelnikov. In fact, the Grimm Brothers version of the tale states that the cave the children went into opened back up into Eastern Europe, and that they became the founders of Siben Bergen in Transylvania. They were writing this in 1816 though, so being over five centuries removed from the incident, they can't quite be considered eyewitnesses. And even if we do take this population movement and these names as significant, that doesn't prove they are relevant. There is quite a leap to say that two families share the same name because one moved across the country on a particular date in 1284 with 129 other people. Also, the theory these were metaphorical children of the town does not explain why the stained glass window created within a few decades of the disappearance only show literal children. It also seems a bit odd that someone decided that the first official record of the town should commemorate the centenary of some people moving away, people no one then living would have even met. Who, again, all moved away on a single particular day? And would you really refer to people who would have died of old age almost half a century ago as children, even if that was a common way of referring to the inhabitants of a town which it wasn't? It is possible, of course, that the relocated individuals were actual children, as selling children you couldn't afford to keep. Legitimate, illegitimate, or orphaned, 
was not uncommon at the time. A children's crusade is said to have occurred in 1212, suggesting these children may have been sent off to war or a pilgrimage from which they never returned. In this scenario, the townspeople would have had to disguise their grief with a story that avoided criticizing the king or church that was the true cause of their loss. Ultimately though, these are all rationalizations rather than explanations, like a town trying to record something too horrible to process. All we can do now is search for a why that ultimately we can never find. And maybe there never was a reason, not for us and not for the original survivors. The rats are not part of the original tale, the piper simply came to Hamelin one day. It could have been any other town, but apparently it wasn't. We've all learned to pay the piper and whatever he or it was. It had a terrible power over a population, forcing a huge sacrifice upon them, which their descendants remember to this day, over 700 years later, and which no other town around seems to have seen the like. Who or what was the piper? What happened to the children of Hamelin? What targeted them and why? We simply don't know for sure, but it must have been pretty grim. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Spooky History. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of videos, like and subscribe. And if you want to support our work, you can donate to us at paypal.me forward slash noisyghostent. Thanks for watching and please do have nightmares. Goodbye.